All rise. The 8th District Court of the Roman Empire is now in session. The Honorable Pontius Pilate, me, Governor of Judea, presiding. Hail Caesar. Be seated. Ms. Anthony, will you please call your next witness? Yes, we call Laura Caiaphas of Jerusalem. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Caesar. Ms. Anthony, would you please ask the witness to speak louder? Can you speak louder? Everybody can hear you. I will try. Thank you. So why do you think so many people were beginning to wonder if Jesus were the Messiah? Well, because of some of the teachings and also because of some of the alleged divine signs that he displayed. But all the signs were either frauds or done by the help of the devil, the evil power in the world. And why do you think so many people began to believe in Everything he did was either a fraud or by the power of the devil. Well, you must remember that most of our people are uneducated. They have no formal education beyond the synagogue school, which ends at the age of 13. That is the end of formal education, unless they enter the priesthood or go into some profession. So, in other words, Lord Caiaphas, a man who is a fool. Has this ever happened before? Uh, um, our poor people are fooled all the time. They are so looking forward to the Messiah that anyone who speaks with a little authority or does a few magic tricks, they are ready to believe. About three years ago, there was a fraud that was called John the Baptizer, who everyone thought was the Messiah. And was he? Of course not. He was killed by Herod. Why does this death prove he was not the Messiah? Because the Messiah is blessed with divine power and did not die. Therefore, he couldn't have been the Messiah. All right, tell us what else you heard about Jesus. Well, last Sunday he resort resorted to acts of violence in the temple. He overturned tables, beat people with a whip that he had made, and started a riot. On Tuesday, he was asked about paying taxes to Caesar, and he told his listeners not to pay the tax. As you can see, a violent, deceitful man. Lord Caius, I draw your attention to March 27. Please tell me what happened. Jesus was arrested by the temple guard, taken to Lord Anna for an interview, and then brought before the Sanhedrin. It was the task of the Sanhedrin to determine whether Jesus was the Messiah. We simply wanted to find out what he had been saying and how much of what he had heard I'm sorry, we had heard prior to this was rumor or gossip. We wanted to give him every chance. If he claimed to be the Messiah, we would have talked with him about this, and that would have been the end of it. That wasn't the end of it, was it? No, unfortunately, he said much more. But what else did he say? Well, just when we were about to release him, he began raving, raving like a madman, saying that he was a king that he was the king of kings, greater than Caesar. It was at that point that we knew we had a problem. How so? Well, he began ranting and raving about raising an army, that he was going to lead Israel into battle and overthrow Rome. He said that if we release him, he'd institute his kingdom beginning on the Passover with a show of force. He compared himself to Moses, who defeated the Egyptian pharaoh back some 1,200 years ago. He said he'd done 
he brings Caesar to his knees, like Moses brought Pharaoh to his knees. We knew that we had to turn him over to you. He was too much of a threat to Jew and Roman. Neither Israel nor Rome wants to see a bloodbath. So, there you have it. Lord Congress, what do you call a man who called for the overthrow of the existing government? A terrorist, a revolutionary, a traitor who needs to be executed. I hate to suggest the death penalty for a fellow Jew, Jew, I'm sorry, but we have got to think of all the people, Jew and Gentile alike. Lord Congress, you are a very wise and compassionate person. Anyone who would bring one of his own countrymen to justice is, is indeed a man of peace and justice. I'm glad that Rome has such good friends. Thank you. I'm only trying to do my best job I can as a spiritual leader of Israel. Lord Titus, I want you to consider the next question very carefully. If you were convinced that Jesus was the Messiah, would you follow him? Without question. I would follow him anywhere. But he was not, so I had to turn him over to Rome so that justice could be done. Thank you. No further questions. Lord Titus, how long have you been high priest? For almost 10 years now. Is it true that you are the son-in-law of Annas, the ex-high priest? Yes, it is true. Isn't it also true that you became high priest after you married Annas' daughter? No, no. I married before Lord Annas entirely. But is it true that when you married her, you knew that you would be an ex-high priest when your father-in-law died or stepped down? Well, uh, yes, I guess so. And is it a fact also that if you die or are deposed like your father-in-law? I'll judge you, Your Honor. Lord Annas retired. He was not deposed. Your Honor, if you would like to take the time to check the record, you will see that your predecessor, Governor Valerius Gratus, deposed Annas because of lack of fraud and extortion. Objection overruled. Ms. Anthony, Mr. Gallio is right. Annas was asked to resign or go through a court trial by the Roman government on exactly those charges. But those charges never proved, Your Honor. Only because he resigned. Are you challenging the dis decision of the former governor based on the facts? No, Your Honor. Very wise of you. You may proceed, Mr. Gallio. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let me see. Uh, yes, isn't it a fact that if you are deposed or die, that one of your sons will take over as high priest? Yes, that is correct. In other words, the high priesthood is based more on lineage than on ability. Well, yes, but not exactly. Uh, please answer the question that I asked. What was the question again? Isn't the high priesthood based on lineage rather than ability. Yeah. Would you please repeat your answer so everyone can hear? I said yes. In a way, then, the high priesthood is almost uh, like a dynasty, isn't it? You can say so. Then, in a country where there is no Jewish monarch, the role of the high priest is almost looked upon as being the real leader of the country. Is that right? Yes, I guess so. And would you not do anything to protect your own dynasty? Yes, I guess so. Including breaking the law? Yes, I mean, no. Are you telling the truth? Of course. Why? Well, you look a bit nervous. And if you're telling the truth, you shouldn't be nervous, right? Yes, I mean, I'm telling the truth. Would you like a moment to regain your composure? Oh, just get on with it. All right. What is your position? With the Sanhedrin. I am the head of the Sanhedrin. Let me ask you a question concerning procedure in the Sanhedrin. Is the Sanhedrin ever supposed to meet at night? Objection. We've gone over this before. The religious legal system is not on trial. Your Honor, I'm trying to lay a foundation here that the trial of the Sanhedrin had no merit except to get rid of Jesus, who was perceived as a threat. Not to Caesar, but to Caiaphas and his dynasty. 
In other words, we are very close to political conspiracy in the name of Jewish law. If you can lay the foundation, I will let you proceed. But be very careful, Mr. Galileo. Thank you, brother. Is the Sanhedrin ever supposed to meet at night? Never. Why? To allow the defendant time to prepare his case, to make sure that witnesses can be found, and to make sure that all the members of the Sanhedrin are present. A very fine system on paper. In a case before the Sanhedrin, tell me about the witnesses against the accused. The witnesses. There must be two who agree exactly in the testimony against the defendant. What, what do you mean by exactly? I mean they must agree totally. There can be no question, no disputes in their testimony. Were all members of the Sanhedrin present at Jesus' trial? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Now let me get this straight. Jesus was brought to you for trial at night, which you can be against Jewish law. Is that correct? Yes, but... And the two witnesses could not agree whether Jesus said he was the Messiah or a king, and whether he would tear down the temple or the whole city in three or four days. Am I right? Yes, but those are only details. But you said they had to agree in every detail, according to Jewish law. And finally, you said that every member of the Sanhedrin was present. But, Lord Caiaphas, what happened to Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, among others? Why did you not invite them? And why did you hold the trial without their presence? Which is also against Jewish law. When faced with a crisis in the name of national security, sometimes for the sake of expediency, the law must be bent. Bent? Bent? You mean broken? You accused Jesus of breaking the law, and if he did, he really did nothing that you did not do, did he? Lord Caiaphas, if the law is good, if it has any merit, it can never, under any circumstances, be broken. You broke the law. You, my friend, and not Jesus, should be on trial. You fabricated the story to assassinate Jesus because you saw him as a threat to your dynasty. And then you tried to make the Roman government an accomplice to this crime. Your Honor, I move for a mistrial. Objection. As to the motion for mis mistrial, Mr. Gallagher, I will not allow it. As to your objection, Ms. Anthony, if I strike Lord Caiaphas' testimony, I will, I will strike it all, even the testimony he gave while you examined him. I think Mr. Gallagher may have made his point. And for the sake of justice, I will let it stand. Mr. Gallagher, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, <clears throat> Lord Caiaphas, about the trouble in the temple, tell me a little bit about the temple tax and the kinds of animals that must be offered for sacrifice. The temple tax must be paid in Jewish currency. Gentile currency would profane the temple. Any animal offered must be perfect, without flaw. Now, if I entered your temple to pay the tax and had only Roman currency, how could I pay the tax? Well, the high priesthood has men available who can change your currency. If you gave us Roman currency, we would change it into Jewish currency. At what rate? I'm not sure I understand you. In other words, if I gave you a Roman coin, your money changers would only give me some of it back in Jewish shekels. Is that right? Yes, that is true. In other words, you're charging people over and above the tax for the privilege of using your temple. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Who makes the decisions on whether an animal is acceptable for sacrifice? The priests. The animals must be perfect. And if my animal did not pass inspection, you would just happen to have an animal to sell me. Is that right? It is a courtesy we provide, yes. This morning I had ten men bring animals to the temple to be inspected for sacrifice. The priests rejected every one. Then you were willing to sell my men animals. 
Now let's see, the prices your priest quoted were $5 for a pigeon and $50 for a lamb. Is, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Then could you tell me why you charge these prices when I can buy the same pigeon in the marketplace for a dollar and the same ram for $10? Our animals are perfect. Do you know what my men discovered? They discovered that your people were buying their animals from the marketplace across the street, the same place I could have purchased them for a much cheaper price. Could you tell the court why? Well, I will certainly check in with the charge. That is uncalled for. It's, it certainly is. It seems to me that you would have given Jesus a pat on the back for running those corrupt men out of the town, unless you knew full well what they were doing and even sanctioned what was going on. Objection on the grounds. Overruled. Lord Caiaphas, do you know what would happen to you if you were a Roman official resorting to such practices? You'd be crucified for extortion and robbery. Your Honor, we are trying the wrong man today. No further questions. Your Honor, one further question before Lord Caiaphas steps down. Did Jesus ever say that he was a king? He said, I am the king of the Jews. You may step down. Call your, call your next witness, Ms. Anthony. Your Honor, the state rests, but we reserve the right to call rebuttal witnesses. You have that right. Because of the lateness of the hour, I will adjourn this court. All rise. This court is adjourned. Hail Caesar. You may be seated. You did pretty well, Counselor, but we still have Jesus' dead rights. You know how I have a 98% conviction, right? Well, you were smart to rest your case. If you could have produced a few more witnesses like Caiaphas, Pilate would have thrown the case out. Tell you what, I'm in a good mood. I'll knock the charges down if you plead Jesus to drunk and drunk disorder. He'll get flogged and released. We'll both, we'll both come home winners. I'm impressed. If I had your big conviction rate, I would not be that benevolent, unless... Unless what? Unless I thought I might lose my case. I think you're worried that this case will be thrown out, and you're a little nervous. So I think this plea bargaining is for your sake and not in the best interests of any client. Don't be a fool. I've got Jesus right where I want him. You better think over my offer. I think your client would rather get flogged than crucified. I think he'd rather have the truth out, no matter what the consequences. Don't tell me you're beginning to believe his story about being the Messiah. I'm not telling you anything. Don't throw your career away by backing the wrong horse. Take my deal. The truth has to be heard. <laughs>